My name is Rahat Kazmi. My name is Rahat Kazmi. Basically, I've done quite quite few things so far. Uh, initially, I was I was a SEMA uh, content. Uh, then I went into lecturing and corporate training, and also do photography as well to advanced level. But you know that's only a hobby. So still currently teach in few universities in in, in the UK, uh, degree level, the master degree level. Uh, but training is, you know, my passion, and uh, of course, it's always a pleasure to teach at MBS platform. So, people, today's topic is quality teaching with stories. Okay, so I would request all of you to please have at least have your cameras on. So, because I'll be, I'll try to teach, uh, talk less, and I'll try to engage you all as much as I can. So, please, you know, of course, it's going to be a very interesting section, interesting sector. So, please, I will uh, ask you all to engage, ask questions, you know, and. I'll tell you stories, you'll tell me stories as well. So because I'll tell you exactly why stories are very important when we teach and train people. So today's topics, we will cover the following things. Three types of stories used in teaching. Uh, how to use a story in teaching. Finding and choosing the right stories, very, very important. Story structure, what the story should include. Emotion, why do we have emotion in stories? Surprise, why should we have surprise in stories? Humor, and what to watch out for? Because these are uh, the topics we'll cover today, hopefully within an hour. Okay, uh, so we have, first of all, this topic, although it's not in uh, our uh, list of things, but so this is very important. I just want to make, uh, make sure you understand why stories are important. So people's stories create scenes, facts don't. So can I please ask any one of you when you see the first picture on the right on the, uh, on the top there, what, what does it tell you? Because you no know, picture, if they say pictures can tell a thousand words, what the picture can tell you? I share this picture on purpose with you so you can all tell me what it means. Anybody? It's an army man. He's ready for fight or something. His army man. Okay, that's a good clue, but I need to know exactly who this army man was. I think this is the uh, last man who left. He was very there. famous few, uh, I think, few months ago. His picture yeah. went viral. The last, the last man who left Afghanistan, right? The last man who left Afghanistan. That's right. That's right. That's it. Uh, last U.S. soldier. Yeah. This was a general of American army. Uh, basically, just and you should look at his body language. And the guy, he looks, he, he lost, it, it looks like he lost his hope. He lost his all determination and everything. So he doesn't look like a soldier. He, he looks like a lost soldier, soldier who lost the war. So this picture was basically that, you know, this, this was basically a story behind it. The picture has, picture can tell a story by itself. And people, you know the story at the bottom, at picture's bottom, what does it say? I'm sure most of you will remember that. I think it's a movie. Uh... It's quite old movie. I don't. I think it's. I don't remember the name. <laughs> the minute. Oh, oh yes, yes. yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So I think I don't need to tell the rest of it. Okay, but I'm sure you know from it what the rest was. Okay. So people listen. You know what the reason I was trying to say was stories create scenes, but facts don't. I'm going to tell you fact. You know, okay. I want you to repeat after me. When I finish, please can you repeat after me the fact? Okay. The fact is. Two legs sits on three legs, eating one leg. Then come, then along comes four legs and steals one leg from two legs. Two legs then gets off three legs and gets the one leg back. What do you think, guys? Can you repeat after me, guys? Can you? Just... Let me repeat once more for you, okay? okay? Two legs sits on three legs, eating one leg. Then along comes four legs and steals one leg from two legs. Two legs then gets off three legs and gets his one leg back. That's a this effect. I'll prove to you these effects, not stories. Do you understand anything at all? No, I think he's a riddle. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a riddle. It's a fact, basically, fact based on uh, the story I'm going to tell you shortly. Okay. Anybody, guys? If yeah, you it's, up, like can... this, um, it's like this is saying. Um, Two two legs, like a person. One person sitting on a stool is eating one chicken leg, and then a dog comes along and steals his chicken leg from the two-legged man, and then the two-legged man gets off. 
the stool and goes to chase the dog. Very well done. Who is this clever person? <laughs> very well done. Excellent. That's very good. Excellent. Actually, that, that's what I was going to tell as well. Okay. Uh, fine. Fair enough. Very good. So basically, uh, okay. No, guys, you know, if I tell you the same story, this lady just told me, okay, guys, then I'm sure you can remember uh, what it was. But see, it was a, it's, the story is about a boy. Okay. Of course, a boy has two legs. Okay. He's sitting on it's a stool, which has three legs and eating a chicken leg, uh, chicken, uh, chicken bone leg. And a four-legged dog comes and takes uh, the chicken, like, bo uh, chicken uh, bone leg from him. And the boy gets up from the three-legged three -like stool, gets up, takes the leg back. Okay, this is a story, okay, which I'm sure can make more sense. And most of you can go back and repeat after me. You can tell me as we pause, or look at, but you know, I'm sure, I'm sure initially, it must have gone just above head. If you didn't know this before, of course, it'll be very difficult, very really hard to go by. So people listen, when we teach our students, okay, Facts can be easy, uh, very easily found, okay? They can be found on Google, you can go into the encyclopedia and, uh, you know, encyclopedia, a lot of things can tell you facts only. But facts, you know, they go from one year to other year and people don't pay attention. So as long as you tell the facts in a story, then people understand that, then people remember really easily, okay? Anybody has any questions so far? Um, I have a question. Um, so yeah. uh, with um, subjects like fic, you can't really make a story up. How are we supposed to um, teach that? Like say they're learning about Furuwedin or something like that. So I'm sure there must be some example from, from an imam or somebody else, you know, you can tell that this, this one was done by so-and-so. For example, I, I once heard, you know, that Imam uh, Jafar Sadiq was sitting with his uh, followers. And the one man came, he was not sincere. And he, he said, okay, Imam, you are an Imam. So why don't you make that, yeah, there's a picture on the wall of a lion. Can you make this, and can you make this lion eat me? So Imam said, no, no, please don't say that, okay. And when this man insisted, so Imam said, okay, uh, lion order you to go and eat this man. So the picture converted into lion and man was eaten alive. So I think these things, if you have a fake issue as well, if you can find some story, I'm sure it'll be a lot easier for students to follow and then understand it, okay? That's what I would say. So please, no, I'm, I'm not uh, too much in religion myself, you know, I, I, I can't tell you lots of stories about religion, but you know, of course I'm a corporate trainer, uh, but that idea was, you know, that we can, we can really teach any subject uh, when it comes to, you know, story, uh, trying to make understanding really clearly. I think that there's some story involved, okay? All right, let's move on guys. So people, Okay, three types of stories used in training. First one is teach, move, and connect. When it comes to teach, first of all, if you look at the picture on top here, I'm trying to show you a little uh, you know, emoji here. Uh, if you look at the picture here, it says, my race is not a virus. Uh, if you remember, Donald Trump, he used to say that, you know, it's a Chinese virus, Chinese virus. So he made he convinced everyone virus for Chinese. When you look at Chinese person, people were afraid. Basically, because these are basically, you know, memorable illustrations. We need to start up, you know, teach something which can sort of link to something else, a case study, maybe link with the topic. So next one, guys, is move, how, and do. In this uh, topic here, I put two pictures there. First one, you can see that man holding a baby. What, what does it tell? What do we learn from here? Anybody? Well, it must be must be a newborn child, like uh, he's the man's uh, newly newly became a parent. Newly became parent. So I think people who don't become newly parent, they don't look after the kids. <laughs> okay, let's just show you know the man is became is really looking like a really dedicated father. He is looking after a little baby, and you know of course helping helping the baby's mother. Okay, so of course that's just you know it just this story will tell you. Uh, how to go and adopt similar strategy. Second picture there is like maybe a speed gun, yes? Uh, I once was going from uh, central London. I used to live at the time in Muswell Hill area. So I used to go uh, seven in the morning after finish work from London. I used to work as a night manager for one of the large hotels. So 
I was going through Regent's Park. Regent's Park on one side of the road, there are diplomat homes. And I saw a policeman coming out from behind the wall. And as soon as he pointed the gun towards me, I must be going about 60 miles and speed limit was only 40 miles. The moment he put the speed, speed gun towards me, I put foot on brake and went to 40. And he just went like this. Okay, <laughs> he was just trying to go, okay, oh, next time I'll catch you. So basically I smile as well, he smiled. And we both went on. So these kind of things, they can really, you know, set up, uh, if, you, if you have a story like this, to move people. People can basically, you know, a story can create action in people, okay? They can sort of link them to the action which is taking place. Next one, guys, connect. Create relationship with, with yourself. So the reason I told you initially who I was, my name is Rahat Kazmi. I was born in Pakistan, lived in UK for 34 years. And I have been uh, working as an accountant, uh, director of finance, group financial controller. Uh, then when I came back to London from Ireland, uh, after spending six, six, seven years there, uh, I started lecturing in universities, started taking MBA, uh, other, other levels, then also started doing uh, tougher training. So I taught a lot of professionals in Middle East, oil and gas, finance houses in Europe. Uh, so I think my business started really doing great until uh, end of 2019. And due to COVID, of course, it uh, went on a bit and I went back to university again to lecture. Uh, so this, the, the reason I'm telling you this, because then you know exactly who you're learning from. So guys, it's always a better idea to tell the students about yourself, who you are, what you do. So because if you don't, if they don't know you, they will not learn from you, okay? So it's very, very important to tell people who you are, what you do, so people can at least relate to yourself. Okay, uh, how to use story in teaching, guys? Best you, okay? Uh, don't tell a story and explain the lesson, guys. When you tell a story, then don't tell them the lesson of the story. Ask the students what the lesson story was, okay? You, and people will also say to you, when you want to tell a story, don't even ask for, for permission. Don't even say, oh, it's such a short story. No, just tell a story, just start telling a story. And then of course, then ask them after telling the story, what the lesson was in the story, okay? Uh, so basically what you can do, you can switch between storyteller and teacher and being a facilitator because facilitator is the one who will take out their own knowledge and connect with the new knowledge. People, I can tell you that from the last 11 years I've been teaching and lecturing that I have never seen a, a student learning so quickly uh, until you connect the previous experience with the new experience, with the new knowledge. So you need to start understand your students what they know already and what they're trying to learn now. So if you connect the previous knowledge with the new knowledge, like a bridge, then it connects really well. It works well, okay? So, so listen guys, here you should see, you have two pictures here on the, on the board here. Uh, one is HEB, HEB plus especially is a, a very big store like Walmart in Texas. Uh, and then second one is of course the Walmart, okay? So Walmart, you know, they spread uh, and they grows, they, they grew really fast uh, compared to HEB. Among Walmart has stores worldwide, even Asda in UK, they're also owned by Walmart. Uh, so of course, uh, the CEO of HEB is named Charles Pert in Texas. He uh, tried to meet with Sam Walton. Sam Walton was the CEO of Walmart. So he requested him to see him. He said, I'd like to come to meet you, meet you with my team. Our executive, he said, yes, sure, no problem. Most welcome. So when, uh, CEO of HEB, Charles Burt, he arrived in the Walmart store in Texas. So he saw uh, Sam Welton on the shop floor and he was serving a lady. He was trying to sell a lady uh, a, an iron board cover. So as, of course, you know, uh, Charles Burt didn't want to waste any time. He tried to approach Sam Welton. Sam Welton says, excuse me, uh, but just wait for me. Okay, just give me a few minutes. Let me talk to this young lady here deal with her, then I'll come back to you. So of course they all stood there, they respected him because of course he's serving a customer there. Because what uh, Sam Walton did, he sold that iron board cover to this lady and she put that in, in her basket and she went away. So when Sam uh, Walton came back, he told Charles Bird, do you know that you know how many, how many used iron boards are destroyed in, in America and people need to replace it? He said, we're gonna sell a million of them this month. And guess, guess what guys? Uh, and in that, in that month, Walmart actually sold 1 million of shoes, uh, you know, new iron board covers because they realized you know, they have research done 
the people were using old iron board covers that they were damaged and destroyed and not really in, a, in good condition. So they sort of launched this product at a good price and they sold really well. So people can ask you, you know, okay, can I ask you please from this story I just told you, what's the lesson you learned from this story? Come on guys, please don't be shy. You already know me, it's Rahat Kajmi. Anybody? Hope you can all hear me, yes? Um. Yes, we can. So I guess the thing is that um, the CEO of Walmart, Walmart was very humble and he mm. was like not sitting in his office somewhere. He was there dealing with the customer. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say. Okay, thank you very much. That's good contribution. Anybody else, guys? You know, this story tells about a success, yeah? Success of Walmart. Why, why did success led to success? What was the reason behind this success? They launched a the product and it sold really well. Why? Uh, they knew their market. They knew their customers. They knew the customer because they had done proper research beforehand. And when the research was done, then of course they realized a lot of people need, uh, you know, use and they need iron board covers because iron board covers they're using, they are either very old or they're, they're damaged or something. And they ask questions, they do some surveys. And when they launched the product, it sold, you know, really quickly as expected. So, okay, this was just story. Let's move on, guys. Let's move on to finding and choosing the right stories. Why is that important, guys? Why do we need to find the right stories? You look at the picture here. What does the picture say to you? Is that someone sailing above the waves? <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Uh, I can see a dollar sign there. Yes, that's right. All sounds well. Okay, guys, this was the first, you know, sort of idea. A man took idea of flying through birds. Okay, this was Peter says. Man took idea of flying through birds. How can birds fly? And of course, you know, the way the birds can balance in air and don't fall down. The whole when aeroplane was invented exactly, this was also done in such a way, okay? That's the uh, people, you know, they created an invention uh, just based on the bird's wings, okay? The way the birds can fly and don't fall down while flying. Okay, this whole the idea was, okay. So people, first of all, when we say, uh, we need to tell a story. The right story will mean that we need to find out who our audiences are. Who are we telling story to? One story, you know, may not make make any sense to some audience, but it might be it might make perfect sense to other audience. Okay. So what is it I want to tell them? Uh, I want them to think, feel, and do. So guys, when we tell a story, we want people to realize, okay, so what they can think, what they feel, and what they do. This should be in your mind first of all to start with. The most productive three is to, uh, things to look for is to find a story is success, first of all. If you tell success in a story, or a failure, or a moment of clarity, those things, if they're in story, it makes more sense. People always remember that, okay? So people listen, I'll tell you a little incident here. There was a little boy, a nine years old, James, he was watching his aunt making a cup of tea. The kettle was boiling. When kettle boiled, she made a cup of tea and she moved away in the same room. And then James was, you know, he was holding a spoon. And you know, where the kettle, uh, where the kettle uh, steam comes out, he was putting spoon on top and then realized, you know, spoon, steam was becoming water and the dropping, uh, the, drip, the drips of water were coming into the, into the cup. And he was quite fascinated with that. He said, okay, what is that happening? Why steam coming into water? His aunt was getting very upset. Oh, James, you got nothing else to do. Come on, don't waste your time. Don't go and do your some homework or something. He told him off. But James, he didn't really take notice of that insult, you know, that uh, telling off. He was fascinated with this, with this idea. Why the steam becomes water? And people 20 years later, the same James Watt, 
it reinvented the steam engine. Okay. All right. So guys, a uh, list of make a kind of a list of a uh, list of kind of stories you need to teach. Search your own past, guys. So I'm sure you know when we spend a lifetime, guys, we can lots of, we can find lots of stories of ourselves. Okay. Uh, or we can ask for stories, or maybe we can find a book of stories. You know, if you are working as a project manager, you're working as an IT person, a trainer, a teacher, you should be full of stories because stories you need from left pocket, right pocket, back pocket, front pocket, because you need stories all the time because then you can bring the lot of stories in life. You know, when I became a lecturer, my first lecture was in 2010 in uh, month of February. And my class was, you know, MBA class in Kingston University and our topic was leadership skills and time, uh, leadership skills and change management. I think about 50 students in class, a big class, and for first 10 minutes, my face was red. And then when men realized no one is laughing at me and no one making fun of me, redness had gone, then I became more confident. After one week, I realized, you know, I was very, very uh, successful. Every group, so other groups wanted to come to my groups of, of MBA. And uh, I was called by the program director. I said, that's why everyone wants to come to your group. What are you doing differently? I said, no, I'm not doing differently. I'm just using your lecture notes. But then we, when we discussed, I told him, okay, yes, there could be one reason, because I have lots of industry background. A lot of stories to tell them. I can tell them a lot of stories when, you know, time comes. I can relate one topic with a story. And then of course, then it uh, understands, it, it creates better understanding for them instead of printing an A4 page of uh, Hero Packer or IBM or something else, it just you know, it makes more sense to them. Okay. People's story structure is what? Just imagine guys, if you found out at the beginning of murder mystery that whom, who murderer was, it would ruin the entire story, wouldn't it? Entire eight, eight question that your training uh, story needs to answer. You know, guys, you know, I also did two time murder mystery at work, you know, with Christmas time uh, with my employers because I think most of my life here I've been working with uh, English employers, British employers. And of course, it, you know, murder mystery was most of the time an issue. Or you might have watched a few movies as well, murder mystery, and they don't tell you till the last minute who the actual murder was. Everybody, everyone could be suspect. And that creates a system that keeps people interested. Okay, so guys, uh, first of all, let me tell you from the diagram, first of all, opening exposition, okay? Then we need to show a conflict there. When you show a conflict, it creates inciting moment. You know, if you watch a movie, first of all, you're watching a movie, all of a sudden you see the movie starts with a murder. Somebody is, is brutally killed. And then of course, the whole story will be about finding out what happened to that person. How oh, they might show that in the beginning, okay? The conflict at the beginning. Then of course, and you're going through the different where there's a different set of chapters, and then you know, you know exactly what went on. Okay, uh, welcome, welcome. Next one, guys. Okay, it's a basic uh, plot diagram. And then from rising action, then we go into the climax. That you know, that's really the top uh, top end of the story. Then guys, from there, it's action is falling. Then of course, finally, we find the resolution. Okay, then story ends. So basically, story guys, you should always have a beginning and end in mind, okay? Without end in mind, story can't make any sense. People won't understand it. So people hear about eight questions, uh, the story uh, need to answer. Number one, what should I uh, listen? Why should I listen to this story? You know, if uh, your learner was there, your, your students were there, you need to ask yourself, why will you listen to the story? Where and when did it take place? Who's the main character and what uh, did they want? What was the problem or opportunity they ran into? So this is our story. You can create a story yourself. Sometimes guys, you know, you can even create a fiction story, but tell the learners in advance that this story is not real, but it's fiction. I tell them afterwards, uh, but you know, of course you can't just tell a fake story and not, not tell them. You just must tell them, okay, this was a fiction. I read a novel, maybe something else. Okay, but this one, this is what it was. Then guys, we had, uh, uh, welcome Osen. What did they do, uh, do about it? And how did it turn out to be, uh, to, to be at the end? What did you learn from it? And what do you think I should do now? Okay, because we got story, every story, you know, sort of give you a lesson. Okay, next one guy is emotion, okay? Stories, turning story guy, teaching stories must evoke some emotions, okay? 
He has three techniques to help bring out emotional components in, this, in your storytelling. Tell me, guys, tell me. We, you have to guys basically, you know, start tell a story. In this picture, for example, what happens there? A man has stabbed himself with, with a rose. Okay. So this is basically, you know, a sh and a sort of tell, a telling a story in such a way the person understands the emotion behind it. Okay. Other person has maybe failed love or something, or I don't know, maybe uh, is maybe beloved has died or something. I don't know. Or maybe he just got uh, his, maybe he's, uh, his beloved has accepted his engagement uh, ring or something. So something. So basically, this is creating emotion. Next one, guys, show me. Guys, you can say, for example, let's say I tell you, uh, a picture, for example, this picture here, you can see that what, what is, what's lady doing here? What's the young lady doing here? She's crying about something. She's obviously upset, but she's, there's no tears there. Like I don't see tears, but it just, you know, kids, this is how kids do. They sometimes pretend to cry to get something, okay? Get something from you. So last one, guys, to introduce, introduce yourself, your practice first, you need to tell who they are. Uh, first of all, let's say I tell you, okay, I worked for uh, Holiday Inn Hotel, Holiday Inn in London uh, back in, I think, late 90s, early 90s. Early 90s, yes. I worked there as night manager, and we used to have uh, a breakfast chef, an African breakfast chef. He used to work in the morning. He used to come sometime 4, 4.30 in the morning. Uh, I saw him coming to work, guys, even uh, if it's raining outside, snowing outside, winter, summer, etc., in any weather, he would never call in sick. He came there seven days a week without sickness, without any, any other excuse. He came, always came on time, very hardworking. When I went to kitchen sometime in the morning to make my breakfast, I saw him working very hard, uh, breaking the eggs, making omelets, and you know, of course, he made everything on time, never ever, ever any complaints about him. So people one day, uh, he was very upset because he didn't get paid. He left a few messages for uh, the GM, the hotel GM, also for HR. No one got back to him. And it was second, third day when he was still waiting for his money to come through. I'm sure he must have any rents to pay uh, or other expenses to pay. So of course, no one listened to him and then no one, nothing was done. So what he did, he one day when he left in the morning, it was I think a weekend, Sunday morning. So he put, he took a, a paint, uh, paint can and put a big swear word on the door of the GM and he left. Uh, so of course, when next day everyone came back and they saw that this is what happened. So now of course the GM couldn't take this insult. So of course, by the day they went to his locker, they found uh, a few sachets of butter, uh, one or two oranges in his, in his uh, locker room uh, and locker box. And then they said, okay, fine. We are, we are uh, sacking you because of, of theft. You have stolen the company property. So they sacked him. So can you imagine, guys, if I had told you uh, a black chef was sacked from job initially, I'm sure he won't get you any sympathies, but no, that I told you who he was, what he did, what kind of person he was. Guys, are you all feeling some sympathy for him? Do you think that was fair the way he was sacked? Yes. So guys, this is what we need to do. We need to sort of, you know, introduce to character first. Then of course, people will have some kind of emotion. Uh, so emotion, guys, is all about stories, okay? Let's move on, guys, to surprise. Next side of stories, bring a surprise. We all enjoy a surprise ending in mystery novel or the unexpected turn of events in our favorite movie, don't we, guys? If we don't have a surprise, if we don't have any sort of, you know, unexpected events, then we can't, don't call it thrillers. You know, thrillers are like this, okay? Thrillers have surprises. You know when they say that you can sit on the edge of, edge of the seat when you watch a movie like that? It's just because this movie would have lots of surprises, unexpected events, okay? Especially horror movies, they can create lots of surprises. Uh, it makes them more effective and surprises play a different role depending on where you put them in story, guys. Surprises, guys, they can, if you put them in the beginning, It'll have a different effect altogether in the middle or end of the guys. So it calls, you know, so if a murder mystery movie or something, it's surprised at the end, of course, that will be really ending a story there, okay? Then that means it would have kept you on the sweet, as you see it, all, all the story. You know, a surprise at the beginning of the story, guys, gets you audience to pay attention. 
But the story, uh, surprise at the end of the story, serves a very different and even more important purpose. Okay, welcome, Sufyan. To create a surprise at the beginning of your story, just start with the most unexpected thing that happens in the story. And then flashback to the beginning of the story and tell the rest as it was as usual, okay? That's, this is how you know movies are done. Most successful movies, guys, you know, they have some surprise in the beginning. You know, I sometimes download movies from internet, uh, from different sites to pay for them. But you know, once I realize, or maybe when I watch a movie on uh, Netflix, uh, if I don't see any surprise, anything unexpected event, anything interesting, I might watch for 10, 15 minutes, and then I'll just skip it, go, go to something else, because that doesn't really, you know, justify my time spending on it. So I'll move on. Okay, any question, anybody still so far? Surprise? No question. Okay, let's move on. Next one, guys, is humor, okay? Do good stories have to be funny? No, of course not, guys, but of course, you should bring some element of humor in that. That will make good sense. People, I had uh, a lecturer of Urdu when I was in uh, college in Pakistan. Uh, his name was uh, Abdul, Abdul Wahid. Wahid, if you know what, in Urdu, I think Wahid in Arabic as well means uh, single or one. Uh, so what happened the story was to see that he came to study in England and the lady he wanted to get married, she got married to his brother. The mom, she met in Sion. And when he went back, he was so heartbroken, he never got married to anybody else after that. So sometimes the students in class, they should teach the students, teach the students, uh, teach, teach the teacher, they will come in. Before the teacher comes, a lecture comes, they'll write on the blackboard, Wahid, tum kab tak Wahid hoge? Wahid, how long will you stay Wahid me? So of course he will come in, oh, you guys are very naughty. He will wipe it away and then start the lesson. And people, one day he was telling uh, us a description of uh, words from uh, a poet of poet of India, Mirza Kimir. Mirza Kimir, I don't know about him. He was a very famous poet. His poetry has been written in lots of textbooks in Pakistan. I think Urdu has literally died in India, but in, in Pakistan it's nothing language, so of course too. Every person in, in Pakistan, uh, they have to learn Urdu until I think he says he's at right levels. So the verse uh, was you no know, like that because uh, Mr. Abdul Wahid, Professor Abdul Wahid, he had gone to himself with his last of love, of course, and what he did, he always, when he had the position of uh, uh, this romantic uh, uh, verses, he used to translate them really well. He had he would take his heart out as well to translate it. In one verse, he's saying, okay, in this, in this verse, uh, the poetry, the poet is trying to say that, no, I'd be lying and my head would be in the lap of my, my beloved and she had long hair and her hair are basically uh, hanging on, on, my, on, my, on, my, on my face. And then of course, uh, uh, jam or wine or maybe uh, looking Kali Sherbet or maybe uh, something else. As we drink, it's dripping from her hair and going to my mouth. And one student says, all of a sudden, sir, if uh, the beloved had lysis, then what? He said, oh, I'm sorry, student, I didn't mean your, your beloved. I was talking about the voice beloved. So guys, basically, this, was, you know, this kind of thing, little story like this, they can basically you know, make this the whole lecture, a whole class, a lot more interesting. Okay, people can, they, they are more, they're more, you know, they more get up on the edge of the seat and see exactly what next year to say, what next year to say, okay? They use a funny visual. While you're telling the story, if you can see here the picture I've shown here, it's like a Pinocchio, okay? Or you can pronounce something weird, for example, uh, emphasis syllable, syllable, okay? Or give your character more interesting names, adjective for president, or max profit for the CFO, chief financial officer, or sell a lot for the sales vice president. Uh, don't be afraid to act. Out a little of the story, guys. Of course, it's, you know we have to kind of link the students' styles with the story, okay, and try to make sure that we teach them as best we can. Find a way to make your funny personal stories relevant to your topic, guys. Of course, people who always had you know some stories in life where we basically can share with our 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 learners, our students. I once simply went for haircut in Pakistan when I was in school myself. I had a brother who was six years younger than me. 
So he used to follow everything I used to do. And uh, of course, when I came home, I wasn't totally satisfied with the haircut. So I tried to uh, order them myself. But what happened now that I saw my hand moved and the scissor went too deep. So when I'd go back to the barber and get everything shaved up, I got totally bald. You know, I got everything shaved up. I asked him to use zero number of timber and use and shave everything because, of course, it, it had, my cut has gone so deep. When I came home, my brother asked me, what happened, uh, brother? I said, oh, this is fashion these days. You know, all the boys in my college, they are doing this. I said, oh, really? He went as well and said he also got his own head shaved. So of course, it, I just deceived him, but you no, know, I didn't want to be alone in the house with his head shaved. Uh, let, I told him afterwards, but he, he was saying, oh, my God, you know, you made me shave my head because of this, because you made a mistake. So people, you know, sometimes we can always find some funny stories. It doesn't mean it's insult to, to yourself, okay, but it just, you know, it becomes more real. Next one, guys, is okay, what to watch out for. Never apologize or ask permission, guys, when you're telling a story. Don't apologize if story is a bit longer. Of course, mostly people, I would say, stories should not be more than two to three minutes, okay? It's really, that's what the story would be, okay? Otherwise, if story becomes too long, it loses the purpose, okay? So try to, try to keep the stories short and to the point, okay? Uh, then, guys, stories, uh, telling stories, telling stories don't need to be long, okay? It has to be sort of uh, at reasonable length, uh, because people, you know, we uh, sort of say about two to three hundred words uh, per minute. Okay, so if you guys, if you, if you have spoken, let's say uh, three hundred uh, per three minutes, guys, you already spoken five to six hundred words. That means if you write it down, it's more than one one a four page. Okay, that means it's it's a lot. So guys, you know, when you listen to video online for ten minutes, that video when you when you Write it down, type it down, guys, on paper. You can see that how long it goes. Okay, it's very, I think, guys, please. So, story should not be that long. Story should be conversational. That means story should not be like a lecture, you know. When, when you give a normal lecture, a normal class, story should be like in story style. Okay, you had a beginning, uh, define the characters as well. It goes to its climax and goes to its end, conclusion with conflict dissolved. Story should be real, guys. Okay, the real, they should be real. If not real, then of course, at least we should. Uh, Tell the learners afterwards the story I just told you this for the fiction I read in a novel. Okay. Uh, let your audience react and share, guys. So when you tell a story, always tell, uh, ask your audience to okay, tell you the moral story, what they understood from it, what was the reason behind it. So people, let me guys ask you one question. Uh, the story I told you about James Watt, what do you thought of that? What lesson do you learn from that? I'm looking for your reaction, guys. I'm sure you're all teachers. So of course, I want to see exactly how would you look for reaction from your students? Hope guys, you didn't forget the story. James Watt? Uh, I think uh, that was his age. He was learning. So we should never stop our children to learn stuff. So. That's why he became a big uh, successor in his life. Excellent, so because that was his passion. Yes. So if you see the kids, you know, they have passion for certain things, let them go on that. Because sometimes our, we, you know, some Muslim parents, we force our kids to become doctor or engineer because that's our passion that maybe something we can do ourselves, we want our kids to do it, but we don't realize what their own passion is, which direction they like to go themselves. So, okay, thank you very much, well done, that was good. Guys, any questions? I'm sorry, I, I might have gone a bit quicker because you guys didn't engage, uh, didn't ask questions. So of course, I finished earlier than I would have hoped. Any question, guys? Anybody wants to know something from me before I hand over to Brother Bissam? Uh, it's really hard sometimes uh, finding Islamic stories to teach ch young children because I think they um, they are really that's their learning age. So. Um, always finding it difficult to like look for stories they can understand. Um, so I really appreciate if we can actually have some some yes. some Tell links like this. Yeah, books or maybe links. Sure, sure. I think I'll I'll probably talk to MUS uh, meeting next time when we have. We'll probably ask them that can we provide some books like that where short stories are available. Okay, but at the same time, you know even. If it's not from, let's say, Adult West, we can even have stories from our own parents sometimes. You know, some parents, our parents, forefathers, 
they were told some stories. I have lots of stories from mom used to tell me, my dad used to tell me, this happened, that happened. So of course, uh, you know, when I'll tell you one thing, for example, my dad came to England in 1995 and he uh, came for first time, then first time and last time because he never wanted to come to England again. But of course, when he came here, he was very impressed. And one day we went for dinner to our friend's home and uh, because I was at conference, my other friends were also conference and other professionals. We went to their homes and uh, so, in one home, we had maybe 25 people there. And uh, one friend of mine asked uh, uncle, he asked my dad, uncle, uh, how do you what do you think of England? So he said to them, uh, well, it's a perfect Muslim country. You should take uh, two things away from it. And no, when he said it's England is a perfect Muslim country, you should take two things away from it. And everyone was paying attention and everyone looked what uncle is going to say next. So basically he said, if you take alcohol and sex away from this country, it becomes a perfect Muslim country. They are doing everything in this country which a Muslim country is supposed to do. And we're not doing it here. You know, just to justify that, I once went to Dublin, uh, from Dublin to uh, Agadir in Morocco. I went with, with my family from Ireland. It was actually uh, a, Lingus, a Lingus flight from Dublin. It's a well, Irish uh, you know, national carrier. So it was my, my flight, my family, an Asian family, and of course, maybe one or two maybe black families, I think. That's a lot of other English or Irish, so mostly Irish. So when we uh, got into the queue there, uh, of the immigration, there were three counters there, we, had, we were in one of the queues. So I was actually quite uh, the middle of one of the queue, and then of course there are people behind me, people in front of me, at least there were 30, 40 people in front of me. And I saw somebody just calling me. So when I look back, I don't know you with this jacket, so when I, I went to him, I went to immigration office. I said, oh, bring, bring your family, brother, bring your family. So I said, really? Oh, bring your family. So I don't know what he wants to do. I called my family, they all, we all went there. Oh, please show us your passports. So I showed him our passport, he put the stamps in them. When he put stamps in all our passport, he said, oh, brother, any tip for me? So then I realized why he called me, why he asked me to break the queue. He realized I'm a Muslim person and I understand how bribe works, so I might bribe him. That's look, I'm so sorry. He made me break the queue, and I'm so embarrassed that I made the, I broke the queue because of you. But I don't have money. Oh no, please, brother, please. You know, I got small kids. Okay, do you take credit cards? He said, no, sir, no, sir, I don't take cards. Any euros? Any broken money? So well, I'm sorry. Okay, no, no, no worry. When you come back, when you come back, when you go back, I'll, I'll see you then. Of course, I'm very angry. But when we came back after after a couple of weeks, we saw the man there again. And he recognized me, oh, hello, brother, how are you doing? How was the holiday? Okay, and he for me, I looked, you know, I spent lots of money in Morocco, I bought this table lamps and so-and-so, I spent all the money. I'm, I'm sorry, I got no Moroccan money left and no euros, I only still have a card left. I didn't want to give him any money, but that was the impression I got when you go to Muslim country, these things happen a lot, but in UK, at least, I'm not saying UK is a perfect country, but this was my dad's observation. So people you know we have lots of stories like this to tell as well. We can tell these stories. It doesn't have to be from a prophet or alphabets. Or if you don't know it, fine, fair enough. But of course, if you're teaching uh, Islamic stories, Islamic education, we should try to get more story, little stories as, as much as we can. And so brother, any... brother Rahat, when yes? you say story uh, telling, so you mean story, we narrate the story to children or students, uh, it's better we show them some sort of video. So probably video would have more effect. What do you say? Uh, video is also good, but I would say story. If you tell story yourself, it makes all good sense. It'll be a lot better. It'll be a lot more effective than showing them a video. Okay. Because so you need to leave the story with the topic. Engaged, like we make them part of the story by role playing or something like that. So you need to link the story basically with the topic you're covering. If story is not linked with the topic, then of course uh, the topic will be like you know we talked about the facts initially, facts and and uh, the scene. Facts don't create scene, but stories do. So we need to. That's the whole idea. So we need to create a scene through story. Of course, you know, we see shortcuts these days. When I lecture as well in college university, I also show some videos to link. But of course, videos you know they don't have the same effect as you tell them personally the story, which is linked to the topic. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Any more question, guys? Before we hand over to Brother Misum? It's not a question. It's just um, I just uh, like I just like to reiterate what you said that it really does help. I think children learn more uh, through a story than just a presentation of fact. And okay. uh, I think they zone out when you put a video on as well, unless it's just like a two or three minute video. Sure. They just zone out. So yeah, I definitely would recommend telling stories. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, sister. That's great. 
Anybody else, Kyles? Anybody else? Uh... I would like to know how I can make uh, stories interesting for teenagers because I have this um, teenage boy who is uh, very distracted do during my class and uh, I don't know how to keep his attention towards the story or towards what I'm saying. Okay, so listen, my advice would be, okay, you know, I've been teaching lecturing for the last 11 years. So currently I teach some number of students who are government funded. So their course is not paid for them even. Government pays for them. So they're degree students. So when I go to a class first time, I usually ask them a question, okay, do you like brands? Yes, sir, I like this brand. I'm wearing this watch. I'm wearing this shirt and all this, that designer, that designer. <clears throat> so then I ask them, why do you like this designer clothes? Why do you like the designer gadgets and say, oh, sir, it's very good quality. It lasts longer and it's got very good reputation and looks cool on me as well. Okay, fine. So you like brand because they have certain qualities, they don't let you down and you sort of rely on them. And you pay, you're happy to pay a lot, lot more money for it. So please tell me, are you a brand? Oh, no, no, sir, I'm not a brand. Really, why not? Then I tell them Rahat Kazmi is a big brand because if I don't believe in myself, nobody else will believe in me. So guys, I tell them, okay, in my opinion, all of you are tough, uh, you know, sort of businessmen in future are tough, you know, future entrepreneurs. So I, I tell them, guys, you are not for me any less than Hugo Boss or, you know, Gucci or they're all top brands for me. So please, this is, this is my image about you. Don't let me down. Don't let yourself down in front of me. And please remember, sister, for me, 99% of the time that works for me because I give them a lot of respect and give them lots of importance. And then they know that I put them at that high level. They won't let bring them down. So I think, yes, stories, you need to find relevant stories to topic if they have, uh, you know, so it has to be more interesting subject, interesting topic or create a bit more interest for them. So everyone can, you know, some people learn from text only, some might learn from pictures, some might learn from videos, maybe some, maybe role play, something like that. So I think all those things you can try and then let's, let's see if it makes any difference. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Brother Mishram, is that okay? Uh, Hope guys, everyone has enjoyed. And if you have any question at all, please feel free to share it in the group and I'll be happy to get back to you.